Hey Hyper Athletes, I'm Dr. Lisa Erickson and today we're going to talk a little bit about pulley tendon injuries and go in depth with that. So a lot of you think you might have a pulley tendon injury and are wondering what exactly that entails and am I the person that might need to undergo surgery. So let's discuss a little bit for pulley tendon injuries as to what are they and how do they occur. Uh, pulley tendons are a little piece of fibrous tissue that is very thick. It's a tendon and it attaches from one side of your finger onto the other. Its job is to hold the tendons against the bone. Now there are two tendons that go underneath this pulley tendon and they either flex the tips of your fingers, flexor digitoris profundum, goes all the way, attaches here, comes all the way through the carpal tunnel, up each finger individually so it breaks into pieces and then it goes all the way out to the very distal tip and attaches there. <clears throat> that is one of the muscles. The other one is flexor digitorum superficialis, and that is a muscle that is closer to the surface, so that's why we call it superficialis or superficial on the surface. Also attaches on the inside of the bone here and wraps all the way up through the carpal tunnel and attaches a little bit more proximally on each side of the finger. It actually is pretty neat because it splays into two, and each piece, one part of the tendon attaches on the bone on the inside, one part of the tendon attaches on the bone on the outside. So when we're starting to talk pulley tendon injuries, we need to differentiate it from other injuries, which can be capsular sprains, jamming the joint, um, starting to get tendonitis on the attachments of the flexor digitorum superficialis, or whether it is indeed a pulley tendon. So pu the pulley tendon wraps around those two tendons. Uh, flexor digitorum profundus is deep, so closer to the bone. And then just above that, on top of it, is flexor digitorum superficialis. And both of those will flex the whole fingers. There are some flexors that flex the wrist and don't flex the fingers. Um, neither of those are in today's discussion. So what the pulley tendon does specifically, there are a bunch of them all the way down your finger, um, what they do specifically is they hold both of those tendons together and to the bone so that they don't bulge out. The biggest myth in climbing is that when you tear a pulley, uh, when you flex those fingers, you'll be able to see a bulge stick out where as, as the pulley has been torn, the tendon will actually pop up towards the surface. With research, it has been shown that this is no longer the case. Um, or our, our theory behind that is incorrect. You'll actually have numerous pulley tendon tears before that tendon actually bulges out. So with our pulley tendons, we have different types. We've been talking about the um, annular pulleys, uh, A1, A2, A3, and the cruciform or circular pulleys, which are C1, C2, C3. Um, we actually have eight pulleys. They are crossing each joint line, and they are also against the bone between the joints. And the ones that the climbers need to be the most careful about are your uh, A2 and A3 pulleys. So when we're finding pulleys, um, I believe I mentioned this in an earlier video, when you bend your hand in that crease, deep over the knuckle is going to be your A1 pulley, the very first. Um, your A2 pulleys, which are the most commonly pulled pulleys, are right in the meat. So if you were to take your knuckles and you are to draw the distance between here and there, kind of right in the middle is going to be the, uh, on the underside of course, is going to be the A2 pulley. These are the most commonly irritated pulleys in climbers, um, and they're going to be these two fingers. And the reason why they are your third and fourth finger is because when you're climbing, most climbers, well all climbers, tend to um, what we call supinate or palm in, and you put more weight on the pulley on the outside of the fingers here, and these two fingers bear the most weight. I've seen tears on the pinky, but usually it's in these two regions, uh, either distal or uh, more proximal. So where pulleys go from to evaluate your own hand, you're going to look, so looking in the flesh of the pulley, it can uh, tear in the center, or it can tear on its attachment on the bone. So the pulley attaches on the bone from one side, wraps across, so across those two tendons in the center, and then attaches on the bone on the other side. So whenever we're uh, evaluating whether you have torn or damaged or injured or have tendonitis in your pulley tendons, I want you to go in and rub on one side of the bone and see is it sore in there, do you have any little nodules in there, um, and then into the center of it, because that pulley can actually tear like a piece of tape um, it can tear down the center, not all the way, but enough of a rupture to cause uh, an irritation. 
And whenever we start to talk rupture, um, especially when looking at, at MRIs, so the only way to tell if you've torn a pulley is to look at an MRI um, to, f to know for sure. We can also see it on ultrasounds. If your doc wants to take an x-ray, x-ray will not show uh, soft tissue. It might show some swelling in there, um, but mostly they're looking for fractures or dislocations. So with pulleys, usually what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an MRI of that. And what we're gonna look for is see how far torn is that pulley. Did it pull off the bone on one side or the other, or did it tear right down the center? So if I were to use this as my little demo model, um, do you have a tear down the center of it, which is a partial rupture, um, or have we taken it and torn it completely off an edge, which is a full rupture? And so it's very important because a lot of times we will show buildup, so where that pulley tendon attaches from one side to the other, the body's going to make it more thick and try to reinforce it. Sometimes it will reinforce it with some extra little bony bits uh, we call that calcification. Um, sometimes the body will put more fibrous tissue over the top of it, so we'll see little nodules, or we will see it actually thicken a little bit. Um, and sometimes uh, we'll see that tendon actually tear, and we'll start to see where it's giving away. So, so don't freak out if you do have an MRI and you see that you have a little bit of a tear, or you have some what we call degenerative process, um, uh, some visual changes to that tendon. So. That's kind of the story on pulley tendons. Um, we'll go into more of the nitty gritty and naming them in a further video. Have a great day.